when criminals are sentenced to death for capital offenses. Some states offer them the opportunity to choose a last meal. While it has been controversially disputed, it is mostly seen as an act of kindness before the death chamber. From a single olive to a clump of dirt and a birthday cake, we bring you the strangest last meal requests on death row. Number one, Eileen Wernos. Eileen Wernos murdered seven men in Florida between 1989 and 1990. She was born in Rochester, Michigan, and had a difficult childhood, including being abandoned by her mother and being raised by her abusive grandfather. She began engaging in sex work at a young age and was arrested several times for theft and assault. Wernos claimed that she killed the men in self-defense after they tried to sexually assault her while she was working as a sex worker. However, prosecutors argued that the murders were premeditated and motivated by money, as she would rob the victims after killing them. She was convicted of six murders and sentenced to death. Her story has been the subject of several books, documentaries, and a feature film, Monster, for which Charlize Theron won an Academy Award for her portrayal of Wernos. Wernos was executed by lethal injection in 2002, but just before this, she made a strange last meal request, a cup of coffee, refusing to eat any food to protest the abusive treatment in prison. Number two, Victor Figure. Victor Figure was executed for his involvement in a murder in Iowa in 1960. He kidnapped and murdered Dr. Edward Bartels, a physician in Iowa, after inviting him to his apartment under the pretense that a woman needed medical attention. Figure was convicted of the crime and sentenced to death, and he tried to appeal against the judgment. However, because the crimes had been carried out across different states, it was classified as a federal case, and the only one who had the power to commute his sentence to a life term was the then president, John F. Kennedy. He was contacted by Harold Hughes, the governor of Iowa, but Kennedy turned down the request because he felt the crime was too brutal. Before his death by hanging on the 15th of March 1963, Figure asked for a single olive with the pit in it. He reportedly told the prison wardens that he wanted to be buried with the pit so an olive tree would sprout out of his grave as a sign of peace. The pit was found in his suit pocket after execution, but he was buried in a different suit and it's unknown if officials included the pit. Number 3. Robert Buell Another person who requested an unpitted olive was Robert Buell, who was sentenced for the kidnapping and murder of 11-year-old Krista Leah Harrison in Ohio in 1982. During investigations, he was also linked to the death of two other girls, Tina Marie Harmon and Deborah K. Smith, aged 10 and 12 respectively. In 1983, Buell was arrested and charged with a Harrison murder after DNA evidence linked him to the crime scene. He was convicted and sentenced to death in 1984, but his case was overturned on appeal in 1986. He was retried and again sentenced to death in 1989, but his execution was delayed due to numerous appeals and legal challenges. Buell's execution finally took place in 2002, nearly 20 years after the Harrison murder. He continued to insist that he was innocent despite the overwhelming evidence against him and his many gruesome crimes. Number 4. Timothy McVeigh Before the devastating attack on September 11, 2001, another bombing had shaken the United States killing 19 children and 149 adults. Close to 700 were also injured, and the culprit was Timothy McVeigh. He orchestrated the Oklahoma City bombing on April 19, 1995, and it remains one of the deadliest acts of domestic terrorism in United States history. McVeigh was born in New York and served in the U.S. Army during the Gulf War. He became increasingly radicalized in the years leading up to the bombing, driven by a hatred of the U.S. government and a belief in conspiracy theories about its supposed tyranny and oppression, especially as regards tax policies. On the day of the bombing, McVeigh parked a rental truck filled with explosives outside the Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building in Oklahoma City and detonated it. At 9.02 in the morning of April 19, 1995, the explosives were detonated, downing over half the building. There was a daycare center on the second floor. McVeigh was found guilty on all counts and sentenced to death. He was executed by lethal injection in 2001 after requesting two pints of mint chocolate chip ice cream. Number 5. Gary Gilmore in July 1976, Gilmore was arrested and charged with the murder of Benny Bushnell, a motel manager in Provo, Utah. This was after killing Max Jensen, a gas station attendant in Orem. He shot them both in the head, asking them to lie face down on the floor, despite having both complied with his demands. While trying to get rid of the pistol he used for his atrocious killings, he mistakenly shot himself in the right hand, leaving a trail of blood. He was turned in by his cousin and apprehended shortly after by the Utah State Police while attempting to flee the state. He was found guilty and sent sentenced to death with two options, by hanging or firing squad. However, several stays of execution were filed for him by his mother and the American Civil Liberties Union. Gilmore was not at all thankful for their efforts as he tried to commit suicide twice and insisted that he be killed as soon as possible, saying, this is my life and this is my death. He was executed on the 17th of January, 1977. His last meal would have been six cans of beer, but he changed his mind and asked for prime rib 
and salad. Gilmore's story was the subject of the book The Executioner's Song by Norman Mailer, which won the Pulitzer Prize for fiction in 1980. The book was later adapted into a television movie starring Tommy Lee Jones as Gilmore. Number 6. James Edward Smith James Edward Smith showed up at a teller's window at the Union National Life Insurance Company in Houston under the guise of conducting some business, but he was armed with a gun and had a stocking mask over his face. He slid the glass open and pointed the gun at a female teller who ran and hid behind a cabinet, leaving 44-year-old Larry Don Rojas, who took the money from the cash drawer and handed it over to Smith. However, as he began walking away, the criminal shot him twice. One of the bullets was fatal, hitting him in the chest, and a few hours later, he was pronounced dead at the hospital. Smith was chased down by two other workers, who were joined by many other bystanders. He was captured and handed over to the police, after which he was found guilty and sentenced to death. Before his execution, he requested Riyakunda dirt, but was given a bowl of plain yogurt instead, since dirt was not on the list of approved foods. It is believed that he wanted to perform some sort of reincarnation ritual. Number 7. Thomas J. Grasso Thomas J. Grasso was executed for two murders in Oklahoma in 1990. Grasso strangled an 87-year-old woman, Hilda Johnson, with her own Christmas tree lights in Tulsa, Oklahoma. He then proceeded to take $12 from her purse and carried away her television, which he sold for $125. Following a series of investigations, he was arrested and confessed that he'd also killed an 81-year-old man named Leslie Holt in 1991 and absconded with his social security card. He was sentenced to death for his crime, and the execution was carried out by lethal injection on March 20th, 1995 at the Oklahoma State Penitentiary. His last meal request was huge. It included two dozen steamed mussels, two dozen steamed clams, a double cheeseburger, a half dozen barbecued spare ribs, two strawberry milkshakes, a can of meatballs and spaghettios, diced strawberries, and a slice of pumpkin pie. He got all he asked for, except that instead of spaghettios, he was given spaghetti. His final statement was, I did not get my spaghettios, I got spaghetti. I want the press to know this. Number 8. Gerald Lee Mitchell Gerald Lee Mitchell was only 17 years old when he shot 20-year-old Charles Marino and his brother-in-law, Kenneth Fleming, was 15 years old. It was on the 4th of June, 1985. Marino and Fleming had driven to Lincoln City Park to purchase marijuana from Mitchell. However, they ended up being forced into a vacant building where Mitchell shot Marino in the chest, killing him. Fleming survived by pretending to be dead, but he was seriously injured in his chest, hip, and arm. Mitchell absconded from the scene with the victim's car, but was later apprehended by the police. During questioning, he confessed to the killings and also revealed that he had killed another man that same day. He was Hector Mungia. Mitchell had approached him demanding his necklace and shot him dead when he refused. He was found guilty of murder and executed by lethal injection on the 22nd of October 2001. For his final meal, he simply asked for a packet of assorted Jolly Ranchers. Number 9. Philip Workman Philip Workman was put to death for the 1981 murder of a police officer in Tennessee. Workman was a struggling cocaine addict, and on the 5th of August 1981, he left his wife and eight-year-old daughter in Columbus and hitched a ride to Memphis, where he robbed a Wendy's restaurant. In the course of the robbery, an attendant placed a call to the police, and three officers showed up. Workman tried running away from the scene and reportedly shot Lieutenant Ronald Oliver. However, in the years following his trial and sentencing to death, the evidence against him was greatly disputed, and his execution was postponed several times. On the 9th of May, 2000, 2007, over two decades after the crime, he was finally sentenced to death. He did not request a last meal for himself, but instead requested a large vegetarian pizza delivered to a homeless person. The prison declined his request, but people across Tennessee sent pizzas to homeless shelters across the city. Number 10. Stephen Michael Woods Jr. Stephen Michael Woods Jr. was sentenced to death for the 2001 murder of Ronald Whitehead and Bethena Bros in Texas. He and Marcus Rhodes reportedly lured Whitehead to a secluded area under the disguise of a drug deal. He was shot and killed by the two men. The second victim, Braz, was murdered because she witnessed the killing. The two were arrested and charged with the murders, but Rhodes pled guilty and was sentenced to life in prison, while Woods maintained his innocence and went to trial. He insisted that he was not the shooter and that Rhodes was the true mastermind behind the killings. However, he was found guilty of first-degree murder under Texas Law of Parties, which allows accomplices to be held responsible for the actions of their partners during the commission of a crime. Before his execution by lethal injection, he requested one kilogram of bacon, a four-meat pizza, fried chicken breasts, two cans each of Mountain Dew, Pepsi, and root beer, sweet tea, one liter of ice cream, two hamburgers, plus bacon, fries, and 12 garlic breadsticks with marinara on the side. Quite a feast. I suppose he didn't have to worry about his cholesterol any longer. Number 11. Marion Albert Pruitt Marion Albert Pruitt was a serial killer with six known murders. One of them was his common-law wife, whom he was believed to have bludgeoned to death and then set her body on fire. His murder spree began after he was placed on a witness protection program in 1979 for testifying concerning a federal prison murder. 
was given a new name, Charles Pearson Pruitt, then hid under that name and began to kill. He would later confess that the prison murder was in fact committed by him. On the 17th of September 1981, he robbed a Unifirst bank, then kidnapped and killed one of their staff members, Peggy Lowe. Over the next several years, he killed four more people in different states, including Arkansas and Colorado. Pruitt was found guilty after trial and received four life sentences and two death penalties. Of course, he couldn't be killed twice and he was executed by lethal injection on April 12th, 1999. His last meal was a large feast with a stuffed crust pizza from Pizza Hut, four Burger King Whoppers, a large order of French fries, three two-liter bottles of Pepsi, a bucket of ice, a bottle of ketchup, salt, fried eggplant, fried squash, fried okra, and a pecan pie. Number 12. Velma Barfield Velma Barfield began caring for elderly persons in their private homes in 1976, but she ensured that at least six of her clients were sent to their graves by her hands. After traces of arsenic were found in the body of one of her victims, further investigations revealed that Barfield had been putting the deadly substance inside the food and drink of her patients. Yet this was not all. Barfield later confessed to several other murders, including her own mother and her second husband. She was tried and found guilty of the murder of Rowland Stewart Taylor, who was her boyfriend at the time and also a relative of one of the elderly patients she had poisoned to death. Barfield was executed six years after her conviction by lethal injection on November 2nd, 1984, at the North Carolina Correctional Institute for Women. Velma Barfield was the first woman to be executed in the United States after the resumption of capital punishment in 1976, and the first to be executed by lethal injection. She requested cheese doodles and Coca-Cola. Number 13. Ricky Ray Rector On the 21st of March, 1982, Ricky Ray Rector drove to Tommy's old-fashioned home-style restaurant in Conway with some friends. However, trouble broke out when a member of the group was denied entry into the dance hall because he didn't have the $3 entry fee. Rector became angry, pulled out his gun, and fired several shots. A man was hit in the throat and head and died on the spot. He absconded and remained in hiding for three days, moving around the city and staying with family members. Eventually, his mother and sister convinced him to hand himself in to the police. He agreed, but only on the condition that it was an officer he had known since childhood, Officer Robert Martin. Martin was conversing with Rector's mother and sister when Rector Rector shot him in the back. He then attempted to commit suicide by shooting himself in the head, but ended up with severe brain damage that left him with a reduced mental capacity. Rector was found guilty of murder and sentenced to death in 1982. However, his attorneys argued that he was not competent to stand trial due to his disability, and his execution was delayed for several years as appeals were made. Despite these objections, Rector was executed by lethal injection on January 4th, 1992. He asked for steak, fried chicken, cherry Kool-Aid, and pecan pie, but he never ate the pie. He told prison guards that he was saving it for later. Number 14. Ted Bundy Bundy committed a string of violent crimes, including murders, rapes, and kidnappings. His killing spree spanned several states and lasted for several years before he was finally caught in 1978. He would approach women, luring them with his charm and wit, or feigning help due to some form of impairment. Bundy would then bludgeon the victim till they were unconscious. Afterward, he would take them to a secluded area to rape and kill them. He also broke into hostels and apartments, attacking women viciously in the dead of night. Even after disposing of the corpses of his victims, he would revisit them again to perform sexual acts until it was no longer possible to do so. He also had the habit of carting away parts of the body, and over a dozen decapitated heads were found in his possession. He was convicted of several counts of murder and given three death sentences. Bundy was executed by electric chair on January 24, 1989, at the Florida State Prison. He refused a special last meal, so he was given the standard last meal for prisoners in Florida's death row. Steak done medium rare, eggs over easy, toast with butter and jelly, milk, coffee, juice, and hash browns. He did not eat it. Number 15. David Leon Woods David Leon Woods showed up at the home of a 77-year-old Indiana man on the 7th of April, 1984, with two accomplices. He had a knife with him, and as soon as Juan Placencia opened the door, he stabbed him with the knife repeatedly. Wood stabbed him about 21 times, killing the elderly man. Afterward, he and another accomplice absconded with a television, which they sold a while later. Woods washed his clothes and disposed of the knife, but he wasn't done. He went to the porch of his victim's apartment the next day, crying and claiming he had gone there to use the phone when he found the body. However, during questioning, his mother said she believed Woods had a hand in the murder. She also allowed police to search her home, where they found the knife, sheath, and stained towel. Woods was arrested and later confessed to the murder during questioning. 22 years later, in 2007, he was executed by lethal injection. He had a pizza and birthday cake with his family before his death. Number 16. Joseph Mitchell Parsons Joseph Mitchell Parsons spent five years in jail for a 1982 robbery and was paroled in August of 1987 to a halfway house where he was supposed to stay for a stipulated time. However, he fled and committed a dastardly crime that same month. On the 30th of August, in California, he hitched a ride with Richard Lynn 
Ernest, a 30-year-old concrete laborer who had no idea he was assisting a fugitive. The journey continued into the next day, and Richard decided to make a stop at Utah to rest, but he was killed by Parsons while he was sleeping. Joseph Mitchell Parsons stabbed him nine times and dumped his body by the side of the road under a sleeping bag. He then wore his clothes and assumed his identity, driving his car to a service station, inn, and department store. He was arrested later that evening while sleeping in Richard's car. Parsons continued to insist on his assumed identity. Later, he said he killed his victim in self-defense because he made sexual advances on him. There was no evidence of this. He was sentenced to death and executed by lethal injection after a meal of three Burger King Whoppers, two large orders of fries, a chocolate shake, chocolate chip ice cream, and a package of grape, hubba bubba, bubblegum. However, he decided not to eat alone and shared the meal with his brother and cousin. Number 17. Dobie Gillis Williams The state of Louisiana executed Dobie Gillis Williams in 1999 for the murder of a woman named Sonia Knippers. Williams' case was controversial due to his intellectual disability and questions about the reliability of his confession. He had an IQ of 65, and there was no recording of his confession. At the time of the crime, he was on a five-day temporary release from Camp Beauregard, serving a sentence for attempted burglary. He was allowed to visit his grandfather for that period because he was considered a model prisoner with no affinity for violent crimes. In the early hours of July 8, 1984, an intruder gained access to the home of Knippers and her husband. It seemed that he had stacked two milk crates and climbed into the bathroom through the window. When Knippers entered the bathroom, the intruder tried to rape her and stabbed her several times. Her husband tried to break down the door but failed. Eventually, the assailant fled through the window while she opened the bathroom door and bled to death on her couch. William's grandfather's house was less than a kilometer away from the scene of the crime, and the police picked him up as a suspect. Following a controversial trial, he was sentenced to death. In January 1999, he was executed by lethal injection. He asked for 12 candy bars and ice cream. Number 18. Charles Rumbar At the age of 17, he committed a murder for which he was sentenced to death, but his foray into crime began much earlier. His first criminal record was when he was only 6 years old, and by the age of 12, he had already perpetrated an armed robbery. On the 4th of April, 1975, he went into an Amarillo jewelry store for an armed robbery operation. The store owner, Michael Fiorello, was shot to death by Rumbar after a brief struggle. It is unclear how and why he had such tendencies at such a young age, but on the 11th of September, 1985, he became the first juvenile offender to be executed in the United States in over two decades. He had a previous track record of attempted suicide on two different occasions and attempted to escape from prison on several occasions. Even during his sentencing, he exhibited a great amount of violence, threatening to kill the judge and his attorney. A sharpened metal strip was found in his possession, and at another time, he actually tried to attack a deputy U.S. marshal, lunging at him with a makeshift weapon, shouting, shoot me. His first sentencing was in 1967, but he appealed and won a new trial. The death sentence remained unchanged, and he was executed by lethal injection. He spent his last moments with his three sisters and a brother-in-law, choosing to eat nothing except a flour tortilla and a glass of water. Number 19. William Bonin William Bonin, who was also known as the Freeway Killer, was described by his prosecutors as one of the most evil people to have ever existed on the face of the earth. Bonin was convicted of the murders of 14 young boys and men, most of whom were from Southern California between May 1979 and June 1980. However, he was believed to be responsible for the death of at least 21 young men and boys. Bonin was a convicted child molester who had been convicted of the assault and rape of at least five boys, whom he held hostage and threatened with death if they divulged his secrets. However, However, some of his victims reported him to the police, and the search began for the serial rapist. He was arrested by the police in 1969 after attempting to have his way with another young boy. Following a complicated trial, he underwent several mental examinations. He was released from prison in 1974 and subsequently began his killing spree. He would often lure his victims into a van and then take them to his apartment to torture and rape them, and then strangle them with ligatures. Bonin was eventually re-arrested and tried for his crimes, and he was found guilty and sentenced to death. He spent spent more than a decade on death row, making several unsuccessful appeals before ultimately being executed by lethal injection in 1996. His last meal included three six-packs of Coca-Cola, two large pepperoni pizzas, and three pints of coffee. Number 20. Kenneth Wayne Morris Kenneth Wayne Morris broke into the home of James Moody on the 1st of May 1991. He and two other accomplices kicked the door open at night while Moody and his wife were asleep in their upstairs bedroom. Upon hearing the noise, Moody went to confront the intruders, but they requested weapons and ammunition. He told them that he had no guns, but he would give them all the money they had in the house, which was a total of $1,800. However, even after receiving the money, Morris shot at Moody four times, killing him on the spot. He was arrested after incriminating evidence led to the arrest of one of the other accomplices 
witnesses who revealed his identity. Morris claimed that he murdered the victim because he had seen the face of one of the assailants and recognized him. He was found guilty of murder and sentenced to death. Morris spent close to two decades on death row, during which time he made several unsuccessful appeals. His lawyers also tried to make a last-minute appeal, saying that he was wrongly judged just because he was a black man. Eventually, he was executed by lethal injection on the 4th of March 2009, which was coincidentally his birthday. Before his death, he asked for a white cake with lemon icing in honor of his birthday. His wife, son, and friends were present. Number 21. Lawrence Russell Brewer Lawrence Russell Brewer was executed in Texas in 2011 for the racially motivated murder of James Byrd Jr. in June 1998. Brewer and two other men, Sean Berry and John King, kidnapped Byrd, a black man, and drove him to a remote area outside Jasper, Texas. There, they brutally beat him, spray-painted his face, and chained him to the back of their pickup truck. They then dragged him along on the asphalt road for almost three miles, causing his death by decapitation and dismemberment. During the ride, his body hit the side of a culvert, cutting off his head and right arm. Still, they continued to drive for more than two kilometers before dumping the rest of his body in front of a black church. Brewer and his accomplices were arrested and charged with murder, and were ultimately convicted and sentenced to death. The case gained national attention due to the gruesome nature of the crime and its racial motivation. Brewer belonged to a white supremacy group and had previously served prison sentences for burglary and drug possession. He was executed by lethal injection in 2011, but not before ordering a massive last meal. He asked for two chicken fried steaks with gravy and sliced onions, a triple patty bacon cheeseburger, a cheese omelette with ground beef, tomatoes, onions, bell peppers, and jalapenos, a bowl of fried okra with ketchup, one pound of barbecued meat with a half loaf of white bread, three fully loaded fajitas, a meat lover's pizza, one pint of blue bell vanilla ice cream, a slab of peanut butter fudge with crushed peanuts on top, and three root beers. He was given all he asked for, but he didn't take a single bite. Brewer's defiance led to the abolition of the last meal tradition in Texas, and it remains the same to this day. A harsh injunction if you ask me. But what do you think? Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, click on any of the two videos on the screen to watch some more interesting content.